Jeff Arnold. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for letting me be a part of this once again. And it's, it's an honor to be here. And uh, as soon as I finish, it's over. Thank you, Brother Anthony and the wonderful church here and people that invite me to speak, all the speakers. I earnestly prayed for every one of you. And the Lord has not disappointed me. Praise God. It's just been phenomenal. I looked at that young boy preaching tonight. When I was that young, I still couldn't do that. I watched him jump around and I felt like Brother Tenny's thing. I'm one of those little cereals in the bottom of the bowl trying to suck up some milk, man. Wow. That was just phenomenal. I appreciate it very, very much. And uh, if I could, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to, uh, I know I told the, 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 the scripture people something, but I'm, I'm kind of out there. I'd like to just go to the gospel of John chapter 6, and then I'll come back to my other scripture if I could. And uh, crowds do not make me nervous. I make myself nervous. There's only one thing worse than a preacher not having a message is having four or five. <laughs> and every one of them are powerful. <laughs> I wish Brother Huntley's here. Brother Huntley had to go. I, you know, I listen to all this lineage stuff and all this heritage stuff and I listen to magnificent messages that Brother Anthony brought to us about that rope and standard and and stretching and measuring and and then I listen to brother brother uh, Wayne Huntley just do that marvelous masterpiece and about you know all the kids and the family and all that and I stood back there during that thing and while I enjoyed the message I felt like I was the lone ranger I have no mother I have no father all my family's dead I have uh, the rest of my relatives all think I'm out of my mind uh, and I thought that, and when he finally came up with that wonderful scripture in Proverbs, it made me feel like I belonged to the family. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for you. I've had so many fingerprints on me. If I don't preach good tonight, there's something wrong. I mean, I've had people prophesying over me, praying for me, sending me stuff, calling me, and like, wow. They must be worried about me. Okay, that's enough. Let's go. John chapter 6, and I want to read beginning with verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude company, a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. Now watch this, Pentecostal concept, that everyone might take a little. We're, we're the original inventors of minimal daily requirements. And then he has more faith, you know. Andrew says, there's a kid over here, he's got some five loaves and two fish watch this fate but what are they among so many you ain't gonna be able to fix this one not with my calculator now watch this and and jesus in verse 11 and in first and 10 he said sit down and and then he said he took the loaves and when he'd given thanks he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that that were set down that means if you don't obey you don't eat because he told everybody to sit down. And folks who said, no, I'm a stand-up religion. He said, well, you can stand up and starve to death because I'm only going to feed everybody sitting down. 
Now watch this. Given thanks, distributed disciples, disciples to them that were set down. Now watch this. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were, oh, there's that F word, filled. I can tell where your minds are. Boy, it ain't far from you from the spirit to the carnal, is it? You need to turn off your video. <laughs> and when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. And they gathered them together, and they filled twelve baskets of fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above. Now let's get the picture. If everybody can take a little, take all you want, man. Get yourself full. I'm, I'm Jesus the maximum man. Forget about those crazy apostolics who are the minimum people. Take all you want. Pick out. And, and, then, and pick up the crumbs and the scraps. And they took the 12 baskets full. Correct? I got a feeling coming back from you people right now that you, you think you know what I'm going to say. I hate it when I get ready to preach to people in my own church and they go, oh, I've heard that. Yeah. I want to just jump up and say, yeah, and I hear your dumb choir sing the same stuff every week, but I act like I like it. And so I'll finish with the rest of it. And the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside still waters, and he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Watch this. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. My cup run, run, runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want to talk to you on the subject uh, as we go home from this conference. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Father, bless the ministry of the word and please help me to be a blessing to your sweet people. Help me not to belabor this point, but to just do everything that you want me to do in the few moments that I have. In Jesus' name I pray, and, and everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, let me see what time it is. I, don't, I, I, I didn't bring my watch. What time is it? It's right up there. I can't see it. It's 8.35. 8.35. Everybody check your watches. 8.35. Ha, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ha. My cup runneth over. I'm going to make you preach with me. My cup runneth over. Hell's going to try to tell you when you get home your cup is empty. But you got a cup that runneth over. Hell may throw some blocks in your way and some stumbling blocks. But he ain't in charge of your cup. You got a God that's in charge of your cup. And your cup is going to run over and hell can't do anything about it because he's not in charge of the water supply. My cup runneth over. Before we leave tonight, we need to understand that God is not a grudging God. He's not stingy. He's not minimal. He's not 
grudging with his goodness, nor his gifts, nor his blessings. He gets a kick out of blessing you. He enjoys blessing you. The Bible said he himself is measureless. Therefore, one of his attributes, which is goodness, is also measureless. One writer said, so great is his mercy that he delights in mercy. He is rich in mercy. As the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy towards them that fear. Oh, I can't get a witness in nowhere yet. Yeah, I, I, now, if, if you can charge me, I, I'll, I'll fix your carpet later. Uh, my, 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 my cup. Ah, my cup. <laughs> I'm going through a bunch of hell. Yeah, but my cup just keeps running over. I'm, ru I'm running out of money, but I'm not running out of cup. My cup runneth over. I may be a little low on cash, but I'm not low on the love of God. I'm not low on the mercy of God. I'm not low on the goodness of God. My cup. You're not hearing me. If your cup runs over, your hands get wet. Your feet get wet. Have you checked lately how wet your table is? Shout at me. I got some trouble. But my cup, it just keeps running over and over and over and over. My cup runs over. You, you can sit down. I didn't mean to wake you all up at once. You know, you're not getting it yet. You, you get them and I wrote the notes. I know how good it is. Just, just, just stay with me. Watch. You got to start looking at God while you leave here. Because like I told Brother Keys, you can't just pshht, pick this up and take it home in your church and go, pshht, and it takes care of everything. It won't work like that. You'll get home and there'll be divorces and there'll be messes and there'll be problems and there'll be devils been doing push-ups to stay in shape waiting for you to get back home. And then you'll walk in and say, Where's the feeling? I don't need the feeling. Let me tell you what I brought back. My cup runneth over. I'm full of goodness. I'm full of his kindness. I'm full of his mercy. I'm full of his faithfulness. My cup is running over. You can sit down. Watch what Paul said, Rev. Okay. He to writes this epistle in Timothy, and he says, the grace of God towards me was, watch this, I know you don't want this word, abundant. Not enough to fix it, enough to fix it and carry you till we finish the race. God help you, holy rollers, that just want enough to get through your chaos and through your trouble. I want a trailer load of it. I want a, I want a dump truck of it because I don't know when I'm going to have an accident. I don't know when I'm going to fail God. I don't know when I'm going to get discouraged. But on my way down, my cup still runs over. Well, you're not hearing me. You see, if your cup runs over, then, then your praise runs over. You know, don't let the devil tell you your cup is dry just because you said, they said you got cancer, you got leukemia, you got this, you got this, you got this, you got this. Hey, I got me a cup. And the boss owns the waterworks <laughs> and he said i watch what the cup says i'll never leave you and i'll never forsake you and i'll never put on you more than you can bear 
but with every test and every trial, I will make a way. Grace was exceeding abundant. You sit down. I'm all right. I wrote the notes. I know what I'm doing. I'd like to help someone now. I watched this tremendous thing that Sister, God bless Sister Mickey, did that phenomenal deal. And I watched all these hurting people up here. You know, it's amazing how we can talk in tongues and shake and quake and throw down and do our moves. And then all these bleeding people and all these wounded people. And all these hurting people. Listen to me. If you don't remember anything else I say, listen to this. The good. Here we go. There's going to be revelatory. Lehman, once in a while, jump out of your seat if you don't mind. You ready? The good. Here it goes. Outweighs the bad. You got more blessings than you got burdens. You got more sunshine than you got darkness. And if God be for me, it doesn't matter who or what is against me. Because my cup over. Before you're seated, turn around, imaginary cup, toast somebody. Wait a minute, no, 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 don't do that silly Pentecostal. No, spill it on him. Go off. You ought to come out of your church service looking like you're all wet. What's happened? I'll tell you what happened. The cup that the Lord has put in me is overflowing. It's blessing. It's unending. One writer said, there is a river that makes glad the city of God. You, you, you can sit down just for a second. Just bear with me just for a second. The good outweighs the bad. Yes, it does. Consider Abraham and Lot. God, the cup in their life was so fabulous. They had so much stuff. They couldn't eat in the same place. They had to separate. That was too simple for you. All right, let me try it. One of your criminal relatives. Maybe you'll relate to him. You know your criminal relative, Jacob? You don't think his cup run over? Now, for 20 years, it looked like his cup ran dry. My Bible tells me you can't find a record, at least I can't find it, that he was on Laban's farm. That's the funniest picture in the whole Bible. God must have looked at the angel and said, watch the two crooks on the same farm. <laughs> One's a liar and the other's a real liar. Two cheats trying to scam each other. Right. And my Bible says for 20 years you cannot find a record, a record where Jacob prayed. He left pregnant with promises and didn't pray for 20 years. Him and his uncle scammed each other, cheated each other, finagled each other. Watch this. And at the end of 20 years, what looked like a dry cup, all of a sudden the Lord showed up. Hey, Jacob. Hey. Jake. Hey, Jake. Yeah. Time to go home. Come on, your, your, your cup's running over. Now, you see, you're laughing because you think I'm doing something with water. I ain't going to hurt this dumb carpet. You're not getting it yet. You can go on a long time where God seemingly has not talked to you. And the only one that's talked to you is the devil who said you've run out of it. You've got an inverted cup. You've got a dry cup. But I own a cup that my master said, anytime I want to make it spill over... I'll give you a fresh future. I'll change your past. I'll turn your tomorrow around. Let me try it again. My cup runneth over. Now, I'm not going to let you sit down. I want you people that say you believe your cup run over to give God some thanks right now. You got health. You got strength. You got soundness of mind. You got more money than you ever had. You got the peace of God. You haven't had... You haven't had a nervous breakdown. The devil hasn't been able to take you out. Why? You got a cup that runs over. Thank you. (laughs) 
You didn't, you didn't sit down just a second. Listen to me. I thank God for this cup. You see, the, the, watch this. Your, your relative Jacob, watch what he said. The cup has been running over in my life so much. 20 years ago when I left, I was a fugitive and a vagabond with no direction in my life. Watch. And all I had was a staff. When God finished with my cup 20 years ago, I had two bands of cattle and oxen and sheep. I had a family. I had children. And I had a future. Oh, I'm going to get rude right now. Why don't you stop sipping your cup and start slurping? Some of us Pentecostals think God is going bankrupt. Ain't nobody found the end of God. Ain't nobody found the bottom of God. Ain't nobody ever found out how much he's willing to give us. There is no end to his goodness. There is no end to his mercy. There is no end to his faithfulness. There is no end to his generosity. Are you ready? And he's on your side. Well, I still, I've got about 35 of you. Uh, let me try the rest of you. See if I can get anything, the living dead over here. Let me try it right here. Are you ready? See if this helps you. If it hadn't been for the Lord. Let me try. I guess the mic wasn't on. Let me turn your hearing aid up, number seven. Are you ready? If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side. If it hadn't been for God when I thought I was going to lose my mind. If it hadn't been for the Lord who forgave me when I broke vows and I broke promises and I did dumb stuff. You can sit down. I don't, I, I just, okay. You, you're not kidding at you. My cup, Samson, lion roars on it. Rah. That's a picture of what's going to happen as soon as you leave. Rah. Rah. I love the way Samson does that. What's the matter with you, fool? <laughs> he didn't put him down. He tore him apart. He ripped his jaw in two so he couldn't hurt nobody else. No, you're not kidding. He said, oh, yeah, that moment in, in because of the times when we just shouted and boogalooed and jammed and threw down. Oh, we ripped that lion apart. What we're going to do? But after the lion comes the honeys. Let me try it again. After your last victory, you need to go back to it because it might become a honey hive. It might become a place that you can get some fresh encouragement. You can get some fresh strength. You can read. Is there nobody in the house that has any dead lions in your life? Don't you have some past victories? Don't you have some things that you can look back over your shoulder and shout, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side? No wonder the writer says, oh boy, you sit down. Here's what he says. Wow. Whew. Ooh. Out of the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweet. God can take your last trial that you think you barely got by and turn it into a Pentecostal condo that you can go back and visit once in a while. Listen, don't you get what hell's plan is tonight? It's like the, it's like the Garden of Eden. He wants you to focus on what you don't have. I don't have this yet. You didn't get, I don't have this yet. I don't have this yet. 
but my cup is running over. My, he's the Lord of the harvest and my cup is running over. Now, I, I, I told our church this and I want to apologize to you up front. Because I prayed about this. Now, you don't think I did, but I did. No, I know. I just, my lingo is not sweet like yours. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, street, I'm a street bum. So I, I cleaned this up and I told the Lord that. When he gave me this, I wrote it down and I said, Now, Lord, if I say crap, they're going to get upset. Now, you think I'm lying. I'm not. I asked my dad. I said, now, crap's a good word for me. I've used it all my life. But for you etiquette people, dirty poo-poo. You got to stop trying to save your image all the time. Your image can't get anybody healed. Your image can't get anybody delivered. Your image can't help nobody. So, so brother Eli, when I asked the Lord, I said, now Lord, really, if I say crap, they're going to get upset. So I don't want to say crap. I, I, I need a cleaner word. So, so he, I felt like that. You might think he's not telling me, but I felt like he said, well, just use crud. Because crud's not as offensive as crap. I feel like running over this whole building. Crap, 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 crap. I got a cup for the crap. I got a cup for the cup. I got a cup for the sickness. My cup's running over. I don't care what kind of trash you gotta face. I don't care what kind of devils you gotta deal with. I don't care. I don't care what kind of disappointment you got to face. If your cup is running over, you're more than a conqueror through him who loved you and gave himself for you. Please forgive me. The things that come over this pulpit are not necessarily endorsed by the pastor. The following announcements did not reflect the network. <laughs> Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Stop focusing on the crud and start slurping at the cup. Yeah. If you'll enjoy the cup, the junk, the trash, the mess will not destroy you. It will not defeat you. As long as your cup keeps running over, you are more than a conqueror. Because if you'll sip from the overflow, you can overcome anything that comes against you. Now you can sit down, Superintendent Man. You're, uh, that's as dirty as it gets. See, I'm not lying. Look, look. See? Hell's plan. Stare at the crud, never rejoice over the cup. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Don't you realize that you get to live at the level of an overflowing cup? You're not hearing me. When you live at the level of an overflowing cup, it immediately frees you from people fear. It sets us free from intimidation and people's opinions and what... Uh, it lets us know that frustration will not destroy me. It frees us from people who are faith killers. Sometimes you don't need to get your prayer partner on the phone. You don't need to text message somebody. You don't need to email me. My cup's running over. How's your cup doing? Every time I slurp from the cup, I'm more than a conqueror. 
Every time I slurp from the cup, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Every time I slurp from the cup, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every time I slurp from the cup, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Let me try it again. I'm making you look good, ain't I? <laughs> you ready? Stand up just a second. Ready? The cash goes. The cup stays. The friends go. The cup stays. The feeling flees. The cup stays. Opinions leave. His opinion in the cup state. We are not an experiment. We are precious in his sight. We are his people. We are his body. We are his ambassadors. And your cup is overflowing. I, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Am I doing okay? Okay. Watch. The problem with Pentecostal sippers is sippers sit and stare. Slurpers shout and praise. The reason why some of you don't praise is because satisfied folks never praise. Proud people never praise. But, but thirsty people I have been living for the Lord a few years and I can, and before God and his angels, I can tell you without a lie, God has never failed me. God has never abandoned me. God, well, you're not hearing me yet. I'll tell you what I thank God, Brother Tenney, about the cup. When I have the cup overflowing, my failures will not destroy me. My mistakes will not put me up for adoption. Because the cup keeps floating, you're not hearing me. We serve an abundant God. He is abundant in goodness. He is abundant in kindness. I wish I could get a witness. Anybody besides me has ever failed God since you've been saved? You promised not to and you did. You promised to and you didn't. Guess what? When the devil say it's all over, God handed you the cup, Brother Jones, and said, watch, it's overflowing. It's over. You're not here. My cup runneth over and as long as my cup runneth over nothing's gonna run over me can I, can I? A few minutes. you can sit down a few minutes didn't mean to bother you just stay with me just a second god delights in a cup that runs over. You may be low on cash. Your life is overflowing with mercy. You may not have any special position. Thank God for that. Your, your life is overflowing with pardon. You may have failed. I realize we're not allowed to say that in Pentecost because nobody's failed. Yuck, yuck, yuck. The only difference between a backslide and a failure is the failure stays in the church. That's not bad. That's good. Man, you fail God. This is the place to be. You get yourself in trouble. This is the place to be. You don't want to quit the church just because you made a mistake. The devil is a liar. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return to the Lord. Here it is. For he will abundantly pardon. There'll be an overflow. There'll be a running over. He's not going to give you just a minimum. I don't want stuff just to get by. I want stuff to get going. Okay. Reverend Mike, you ready? Listen to me. Just before he reads his scripture, you and I may have to drink from disaster. We may have to experience some stuff we dislike. We may have to deal with stuff that's exasperating. But the cup keeps running over. 
You may feel like you're friendless, but you have a friend in the cup that loveth at all times. You have a God that understands you and cares for you and loves you. Watch what one writer said. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, watch, who daily, oh you bunch of wussies, who daily, I can't hear you. He didn't load, that would be singular possessive. Load F, continues to load. When's the last time you got loaded? When I used to go to bars and whorehouses and honky tonks, I went in there getting loaded. Once you get loaded, you don't care about nobody's opinion. You don't care about nobody's attitude. You don't care whether you dance in step. You don't care whether you sing in tune. Some of you ain't got loaded lately. Bible said, bless the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. A benefit is an extra, a bounty, a favor, something not earned, something not worked for. It's a freebie. I'm, re I'm ready right now, Stephen. You ready? Huh? Freddie's coming up for a freebie. You ever see people that got palsy and the shakes and all that stuff when they go to drink? That's what I do about the things of God. Your opinion don't matter to me. Why do I care? You can't cast no devils out anyway. Let's try it one more time. Time to toast. Time to toast. Ready? Watch out. It's coming your way, Jones. I'm just about ready. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. An overrunning cup gives you confidence and faith for your tomorrow. You may not know what's coming on tomorrow, but you got a God who is in tomorrow, who will never leave you, and he'll take you into your tomorrow. You can sit down. I'm almost there. Almost being the key word. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And what, what, what did you say? Oh, I want to ask you, holy roller folks. You got any stuff inside you can't bless God? Well, that, that was... Yeah, that was feel like I'm preaching morals at the Democratic Convention. I'm going to try it again. Come on, you, you're with me. You've been helping me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. If you've got something inside of you that can't bless the God of heaven, then ask forgiveness. Get it out. Apologize. Repent. Do whatever you got to do. Because God wants everything inside of us to bless Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who healeth all thy diseases, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who restores your health. You didn't, you didn't earn that at salvation. Those are benefits. I'd serve God right now just for the benefits. Some of you just serve him just for your cash. I'll take the benefits. What, what does peace? When you put your head down tonight in the bed and you know that you haven't been vile, you haven't been wicked, and if you have been, God still offered you mercy and forgiveness. There is a river. The streams thereof make glad the sin. Oh. Hey, Brother Jones, listen to what this says. God refers three times to 
to himself in these scriptures. In 2.13 of Jeremiah, he said, they have forsaken me the... No, 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 no. Not a two dollar bottle of water. A, a fountain. Fountains flow. You guys are digging out cisterns trying to hold your junk. I'm the fountain. Then he turns around and tells that babe, shack it up with that guy in John 4. He said, you know, if you'd asked me, I'd have given you the drink, watch. And what I'd give you would be a well. Watch this. Not that you got to go down and try to pump three ounces out. Springing up into... If you got the Holy Ghost, you got a well inside you that wants to spring up into everlasting life. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried aloud, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Here it is. He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers, plural, rivers, 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 rivers of living water. And if you got the Holy Ghost, you got rivers in you. Give me just a few more minutes and I'll stop, okay? You ready to read for me, Reverend Mike? 86.5, 86.50. For thou, Lord, art now, now, good. Now, he's going to read in English. Mucho taco bello. In sprechen Sie Deutsch. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Inglesia. When you hear the Inglesia, you do something uh, because this is the overflowing and the running over cup. All right, I won't interrupt you now, Mike. Read. 86 and 5. For thou, Lord, art good. That's enough. I said, Brother Beckton, he's a good God. He's a good God. He is a good He's a good God. He's not stingy. He's not selfish. You ain't got to beg him. All you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is praise him. All you got to do is believe him. My, my cup, it keeps running over. With what? The goodness of the Lord. Now, never mind all these cowboys on TV. Goodness to them is the Mercedes. $400,000, $2 million mansion. Stuff, things, toys, trinkets. What a shame to think that, that God would be limited to a few stupid little toys. I'm going, I'm going through a bunch of hell. Yeah, but the goodness of the Lord. I'm, I'm going through some doubts and fears, but the goodness of the Lord. Keep, keep going, Reverend Mike. You can sit down. Thou art good and ready to forgive. What part of ready are you struggling with? I'm, not, I'm losing you somewhere. I know it's been a long conference and you want to go home. Me too. I just happen to be working tonight. Are you, are you getting it? You get that? And he's ready. It's like God is standing on the balcony of glory going, I sure hope that idiot asked me for some help. I sure hope he just confesses he made a mistake. He watched something he shouldn't have watched. He read something he shouldn't have read. He said something he should have said. He imagined something he shouldn't have. You ain't got to beg him, Brother Steve. He's standing there unready. If you'll ask me, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open for everyone that asks. Please continue, Reverend. You're wonderful. Go ahead. He's good. He's ready to forgive. Ready to forgive. And he's plenteous in mercy to all them that call upon. That word plenteous, one of the interpretations is measureless, limitless. He's plenty. Not plenty like good and plenty. No. Plenty S. God's trying to show you how. How, how neat and fantastic he is and how measureless he is. He said, I'm plenty. Yes. 
And he just stretches plenty from one end to the other end of the universe. And it just keeps on going. And he's plenteous in, in mercy. Let me ask you something. When your cup runs over, you have the privilege of him talking to you. I have someone sitting here. Uh, I, I saw him in the auditorium before. I did something yesterday. It was very stupid. And, uh, and I thought it was cool, but it was stupid. And it was one of my friends. And uh, I just walked up to him because his hair was kind of hanging on the back of his shoulder. And I said, what are you doing, growing a sweater? <laughs> and, and I thought it was funny. And he kind of laughed. And I just kidded with him. And I left. 5.15 this morning, the Lord wakes me up. Says, I want to talk to you. I said, all right, give me one of them stem winder messages. I'm ready. <laughs> he said, I'm very unhappy with you. I said, why? He said, you showed disrespect to an elder. And you thought it was funny. And I didn't think it was funny. And I started weeping and sobbing and apologizing. And I said, you let me see that guy today, and I will go right up to his face, and I will apologize and say, I was stupid, and you're fine, and just please forgive me. Now, now you're looking at me saying, what's that got to do with that cup? Oh, if my cup wasn't overflowing, I would not be able to feel that conviction when I do something stupid. And if my cup wasn't overflowing, Brother Keys, I wouldn't have the propensity inside of me. I just do like the rest of them. Just write it off. Don't worry about it. No big deal. It's a big deal when God talks to me and turns around and says, I am not happy with the way you handled that situation. Did you do any damage? According to him, I must have done some damage. I apologized to this man. He said, ain't no problem. I, I feel good right now. Pardon, pardon me. I got, I got to take a drink. Don't you understand? The reason God was so wonderful to bless Abraham, so he had all these stuff, and the guy said, God has blessed my master greatly, and he's got cattle and herds and children, I mean, all kinds of stupid stuff. Watch how it started with Abraham. Brother Morgan, watch how it started. You're a faith man. Here's how it started. Genesis 13. Soon as Lot separated from Abraham, the Lord turned around and said, now lift up your eyes and look at all the land. Now notice, this was a selective lift up and look. It wasn't perpendicular. It was horizontal. He said, look at all the land that I'm going to give you and your seed. Watch what he said. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. If a man can count that much, so shall thy seed be. Please hear me. I got a word from God right now. If you don't think nothing else was, I got one for you right now. When I was in the motel getting ready here, God gave me a thought I've never preached ever in my life. He said, tell my people that sometimes between the promise and the performance is the pause. God said, I'll make your seed like the dust of the, of the land. He said, great. He was 75 when he got that promise. He was 85. And it hadn't happened yet. So you have conception, gestation, birth. We Pentecostals want conception, birth. That's good. Good. Now watch, I'm not finished yet. If you read Genesis 15, the Bible says that the Lord shows up in Abraham's life. I got it right here. And the scripture says he gives him a vision. Now watch. He ain't done nothing with him for all these years. Ten years he's lived with an unfulfilled promise. Pregnant with a promise, but it ain't come out yet. And the Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham in a vision. Why would you do that, Lord? Because my servant is getting fear images. You see, I'm going to help you. Morton, don't, don't get upset. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. Faith and fear both come to you by what you see, what you hear, and what you think. Now watch. If you read the first five verses of Genesis 15, 
says the Lord, said, I am their exceeding ward and I am their shield. Why? He just had that war with those five kings. He's scared to death. He said, listen, your fear images is keeping me from protecting you. I'll go a little further. You're sitting there staring at me? Fine. Watch when he turns around and he says, come on, let's go take a walk. Now, I know, Barbara, it was at nighttime because he asked him to look at the stars. Now, he's had 10 years of a promise that ain't happened yet. And the promise is his seed. Now, watch what Abraham betrays. He shows God that his heart is full of fear and unbelief. He said, Behold, Lord, thou hast given me no child, and this Eliezer, my steward, he's going to inherit all my stuff. He revealed to God what was in his heart. He wasn't believing God yet because time had ripped away from him his confidence and faith in the original promise. Don't let delay defeat your faith in God. The pause belongs to him. I'll go there myself. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting this with a commercial. Watch this. Behold, Lord, verse 3. Behold, that means see, look, stare at, scrutinize. Thou hast given no seed unto me, and one born in my house is mine heir. And the word of the Lord came and said, This shall not be thine heir, but he that cometh out of thy bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards the heavens. Watch this. God gave him a promise, and for 10 years he's studying the sand. God says, man, you still don't believe it. Lift your head up now and start counting the stars. Now this poor guy, I don't want to reroute. he's doing everything he can to believe God for one kid. And God says, they're all yours. It is easy for God to give you a 200 soul revival as it is for God to save one person and give them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He owns the sand. He owns the stars. He's the Lord of the harvest. Don't let your delay steal your promise. Am I making sense yet? I'm almost done. Are you, I understand. Now, now this... Now, this may be my revelation only, okay? You may not be able to prove it by your, your books. Watch this. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, watch, if you're able to number them. Yeah. Colon. Yeah. You ready? Jerry, you got it? You're the thinker. Ready? <laughs> we always read this and miss it. Watch what he said. Go count the stars if you're able to number them. And. And is a conjunction joining two thoughts together. And. And. So shall thy seed be. God took a breath. Look now to the stars and count them if you are able to. End of sentence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 7, 10, 10, 10, 10, And then I don't know how long it was till God said, And so shall thy seed be. You may get a direct promise from God. You may get a vision or a dream. But you may not know how long the pause is. Keep believing God. Keep having faith. Keep praying. Keep stretching your hand. Because God is in charge of the pause. Yo, I, you, you, you can see that I'm, I'm going to close. See, Job had the same problem. 
Whatever gets in your mind and stays long enough will eventually get in your heart. And whatever gets in your heart will come out of your mouth. And your destiny is ruined by your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Job said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon you. But one translation says, the thing which I saw in my mind has come to pass. You see, God, he's not troubled with our level of faith. He's troubled with our negative fear images. Because words and thoughts and visual things produce mental pictures. And what you hold in your head will impact your life. That's why I'm careful not to sit. Excuse my, excuse, I'm sorry, Superintendent Man. I got another nasty one coming up here. I'm, I'm so, I don't spend my time sitting next to nincompoops. I'm not going to sit next to some moron playing on their iPod, text messaging, checking on the football game, who won the NBA. I'm not interested in that junk. I got devils to fight. I got my spirit to crucify. I got situations to believe God for. I ain't got time to sit next to some faith killer. Somebody is going to say, well, I don't think that's possible. I don't give a flip what you think. I got a promise from God and the cup is running over. Okay, I don't know how long I spoke. How long did I speak, Mike? It, does, it makes a lot of difference because I, 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 I'm my favorite preacher. Okay, just give me a few more minutes and, and I'll stop. Ready to read for me, Mike? I'll stop. I'm stop. Do you get what I'm saying? Job said, what I saw in my mind. And what brother... Brother Keys, while I was walking around tonight, I already had six pages of notes. I didn't need any more help. The Lord stopped me in the middle of walking around in that place. I had to keep turning the light on. He said, tell my people, those that need healing, that need deliverance, that they have to first see themselves healed. I'm sorry, did I ruin your day? got to see yourself. Oh, I hope he heals. It'll never happen. The woman with the issue of blood, she saw herself well before she got well. The leper saw himself being healed before he ever got healed. The Syrophoenician woman saw her daughter being delivered before she ever got a problem. The problem ain't your preacher. The problem ain't this church. The problem is you got to dig up some courage and start seeing yourself without your diabetes, without your leukemia, without your crippled limbs, without your empty bank account. You're waiting for somebody to lay hands on you. My God, that's magic. You can sit down, I'm almost close. Bible said, when Bartimaeus heard, now watch, remember, you get faith pictures and fear pictures by words. When he heard it was Jesus, he got a picture in his mind. Be healed in a minute. You people, we come down here and start praying for you, you're wearing us slap out. You're hoping some guy who's got a gift from God can override your dumbness. When you leave that seat, you got to come out of that seat and say, where are you going? I'm going to get healed. I'll be back in a minute. I see myself well. I, you can't even get the Holy Ghost without seeing yourself getting the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to go home and build some great church without seeing that church happening. You got to have a mind picture. You got to have a faith picture. You got to cast out that fear image and replace it with a faith image. I'm sorry. I got a divided house on my hands right now. You think I'm kidding you? You don't think you get an image when you hear something? Cancer! Leukemia! Inoperable! And with words comes an image. 
That's what Abraham said. I see myself childless. Well, I got to fix that. I got to get the fear image out of your head and put a faith image in your head. It's not enough to cast out the negative. You got to replace it with a positive. Yes, 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 yes. Remain standing. I, I, I don't need to preach no more. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing so good. It's fine. I, just... When you sip from the cup, you can say right in the face of your adversary, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the goodness and the mercies and the grace of God. Just stand with me a minute. I've been standing a long time. You think I'm kidding you? David. Watch what he says, Mike. Remember, out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaking. I shall one day perish at the hand of Saul. That dirtbag couldn't kill you if he had an M16. You have a destiny that's going to outdo that moron. You're the only giant killer in Israel. You're running away from a jerk who's throwing spears. How, what caused you to do that? I saw a fear image. I'm, I'm going to die of this. God, you're not hearing me yet. I, I'm not doing any good for you. I'm so sorry. Watch. The Bible said he had a dust image for 10 years. Now, here's the scriptorian, but the corner of the scripture says, and he lived in Canaan 10 years when, when the Hagar issue came up. Remember that one? Right. But, but what? He only did that because he had a dust bowl image that was now being replaced by a fear image. So God had to give him back a faith image. So he takes the fear image out of his head and he says, so shall thy seed be. You ready for this? According to my Bible, he counted for 15 years. 7,465, 2,775,642 at night time. When fear would try to grab a hold of him and, excuse my term, rape and molest him of this promise, he'd just throw his head to the heavens and go, 2,753,005, those are all my kids up there. 8,642. During the daytime, when he was struggling and walking in the wilderness, he couldn't see the stars. God said, that's okay, I'll give you some sand. During the day, count the sand. 8,265,943, 2,965, 8,960,000. Oh, it's sunset. 2,563,000. Sometimes all you can do is walk and count. Walk and count. Walk and count. Walk and count. And when the fullness of time comes, the promise is going to happen. Now I am taking five minutes and that's it. When you believe that your cup runneth over. Then and only then does it burn the word surely. Sip. Surely. Surely uh, can be relate, relied on. Absolutely true. Beyond dispute. Trustworthy. Now let me do it Brooklyn ways. Ain't no doubt about it. When he wrote, he didn't turn around Jim and say, it could be, it might be, well just maybe. He said, oh no, I've been slurping on that overrunning cup so long, I'll stand flat footed in the face of everything and say, surely. Surely the foundation of God standeth sure. God knows them that are his. Surely I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you've got a surely, you're unbeatable. Uh, 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 I, oh, for my apologies. Surely, surely what, Mike? Surely, surely, 
goodness. Wait a minute. Surely, goodness. Goodness is for your stops. Mercy is for your stumbles. Goodness is for your provision. Mercy is for your pardon. Let me tell you something. Hell can't attack you from the front. You're moving towards God. He's got to come up behind you. And before he can get to you, he's got these two hound dogs from another world walking behind you. And every time you walk and you feel like you ain't got nothing, just look over your shoulder and say, oh yes, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not just that because of the times, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy, surely God's going to see us through. Surely God's going to answer our prayer. Surely God's going to make a way. We've got a potentate that is pursuing us. Now it's time for one last toast. Come on, everybody ready? Spill it around a little. My cup runneth over. Here we go. Surely. Surely. Surely what? I'm coming out of this. This ain't going to destroy me. This is not going to steal my... I'm going to try it again. If you've got a surely, you're unbeatable. If you've got a surely, you're unstoppable. And we have a sure God. And His Word is sure. And His prophecies are sure. And His promises are sure. Even when we are faithless, He is surely faithful. Now clap your hands. I'm done. If he brought you out, he's going to take you through. And if he takes you through, surely he's coming back for us and we're going to be with him. preacher and just step out and get as close as you can to the front. Come on. Just get as close as you can. If anybody's going to one of the doors, run over them while they're coming. Get, get in here as quick as you can. Come on. Just get close as you can. That's it. Come on, preachers. Oh. Oh. Look at this. We just got to get as close as we can. I do this and forget we're all preachers. But come on. Come on down. Come on down. Let them down. That's it. Come on. Yesterday, a couple of the men that helped me with this meeting spoke the word that we got to receive the word. God wants us to receive that right now. Now, we've had a powerful meeting. He's still preaching back here. Come on, say it to everybody. Don't just say it to them back here. Let me tell you something. Uh, Scripture says that when Jacob was told by God to go back, remember, to Bethel, and he meets his past, Laban, if you read Genesis 31, 32, he starts pleading the promises and he turns around and says these words. You said to me that if I would return, here's what he said, you would surely do good to me. Next time you're facing a bunch of stuff and trash and junk that's trying to steal your faith and rub your nose in it, step back and said, surely I've got a promise from God. Surely. God is going to keep his word to me. Surely he is going to help me. Surely I'm going to overcome whatever I've got to deal with. If you've got a surely, you cannot be defeated. Praise the Lord for that.
I told the Lord, I said, if you really want me to say this, I'll just have to call me up there. A few years ago, wherever Sister Mangan's at, Sister Vest or uh, Mickey, I was going to talk to you after church. I went through a horrible darkness. Can't even describe it. And standing at a kitchen sink, I was drinking a cup of water. And the Lord said, How many ounces will that cup hold? I said, I don't know, Lord, 10, 12, 8, I don't. He said, That cup is only designed to hold so much. He said, I want to ask you a question. Can you drink the cup? We always preached that the cup's the cup of sin in the garden, but really it was the cup of suffering. suffering. The mother of James and John said, I'm set one at the right and the other the left. Can they drink the cup? And so at some point, all of us will drink from the cup of suffering. But the enemy tells us it'll never end. But that cup's only designed to hold so much. And Brother Keys at your missions conference, I don't know if you remember, Sister Vesta Manning was there speaking and she turned on me. She didn't even know what was going on. And she said, I feel to give you a verse out of Isaiah and the cup of trembling I will take out of your hand and you will drink it no more. I'm gonna give it back to your enemy. And I said, okay, Lord, I understand you're trying to tell me something. But the deal is, is there's a transition somewhere. Because once we drink all that's out of that cup, he said, but I don't want your hand to be empty. Oh, there you go. I got another cup I want to put in your hand. But this is the cup of blessing. And it runs over and over and over. It's, it's, it, it just keeps going. And I feel to tell somebody in the Holy Ghost tonight, you need to switch cups. If you've gone through what God's told you, there's a cup of blessing that you, I feel to prophesy to somebody that there's a new cup coming. That cup of suffering's over. But there'll be a cup of blessing and when that cup comes, he says it's just gonna run over and run over and run over. Hallelujah. I believe it's time for the apostolics to change cups. It's time for the cup of blessing to be in our hands and for it to overflow. But the problem is, but the problem is, is if you're not careful, that cup becomes your identity. Every time they see you, they see you that cup and you're just sipping. You know what? You might as well get ready for it. If you don't drink it, you're just gonna get bitter. It's time for some of you to finish drinking the dregs of that cup. Woo! And then you need to say, okay, Lord, it's over. I'm through. I receive now the cup of blessing. Hallelujah. I am going to have an overflow. I am going to be blessed of God. My cup will run over. My cup shall overflow. God wants to pour it out on somebody tonight. It's time for it to happen. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. My cup runneth over. Let go of that old cup. Let me put the cup of blessing in your hand tonight. to flow in this house that's going to take us into a great dimension of faith to leave here with. It must have been while Sister Mangan was speaking today that God was dealing with so many of us. 
And I began to think about that beautiful scripture. Weeping may endure for the night. Joy cometh in the morning. We've all thought about the long night and the joy that comes. And I thought, well, Lord, I've been through the night. And I've been there when the joy came. The problem was night came again. But every time night comes, morning comes. We think about a day in terms of morning and night. But when God made the world, he said the evening and the morning were the first day. It ain't over till the morning comes. That when the day completes itself, and it doesn't matter. Night will come in cycles, but the joy will come with every cycle because he's going to make a way out of everything you get into. And there is a dimension of faith in this place. I'm just here to prophesy. You're coming out of what you're in. You're coming through the valley. You're walking through now. The joy is coming. They preached to it today. They told us to receive it. Let me tell you what God wants us to do in the season we're in right now. We need to start seeking God for the gift of faith. Because the gift of faith is a gift that comes from God. We can't comprehend what this man preached tonight because it's the goodness of God. It's the grace of God. It's the abundance of God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We can ask or think. I can't think it good enough. I can't imagine what God wants to do. He said, that's no problem. I'll gift it to you. I'll put it in your mind to believe me for what I already want to do. I'll gift you the faith that's going to produce the miracle. I don't want you to strain for it, stretch for it. I want you to lift your hands up. There is a downpour in this house right now of the gift of faith. And when we get done receiving it, there's going to be working of miracles in this house in a few moments. Praise the Lord for the gift of faith right now. Come on, lift up your voice. I prophesy that the gift of faith is being released in this movement. We're going to begin to believe God and declare things that in the fleshly dimension are unreasonable. But in the spirit realm, they are the declaration of the intention of God. I release the gift of faith into you. I speak faith into you overflowing. I speak faith into you that will move the mountain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive it in this conference. Receive your faith right now. God, I pray in this season we're in that the gift of faith will be a gift you will grant this movement. Grant this United Pentecostal Church, every minister, every national official, every district superintendent, every pastor, every evangelist, every prophet among us, every apostle among us. I pray, God, let us flow in the dimension of the gift of faith, fearing nothing. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. That's it. Praise him. Praise him. The Lord is going to confirm this with the working of miracles. If I could take one minute and stand beside this wonderful man. Matter of fact, if I can just get in between you. I got to tell you something, and I promise I'll be one minute. This was my because of the times. Marilyn, it was your because of the times. Sister Mickey, I feel like I have a word from God. You epitomize what this church is becoming, this local church. This church will have greater revival because they're more sensitive than they've ever been because we're in tune. Brother Tenney, I've been following peace, but I've been sanded down pretty good. But it's done something in my life. And if I can just, if you'll indulge me for one second, the reason why the other night I said the spirit of G.A. Mangan has permeated this place. Some of you just, you're just not going to tune into that. But let me tell you why. When that man prayed in tongues, there was a release. Now, Brother Anthony, I know you shared this with me on a Sunday afternoon on the cell phone. That spirit will never leave this place. And i got to tell you something. Your church can have it. When I say his spirit, I'm talking about passion, power, faith. You've got to die to pride. If you want that power, you've got to die to pride and say, die to pride and say I'm going to take it in Jesus' name. But I feel like, I just feel like this conference is at such another level. Because when I talk about T.W. Barnes, I know it was only a flash vision, but it was as if I could see holy men of God walk across this place. And then when Brother Huntley got 
some of the legends out here. It was all just coming into my mind. We have sat. You know, Brother Anthony, i got to tell you something. This is because the time has gone by so quick. I know it hasn't for you because you're wore out. It's gone by so quick because we've been in a heavenly place. But pain is going to give way to power. Now, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. But miracles are going to happen. Cancers are going to be smitten. Heart trouble is going to be healed. But do what Brother Arnold said. Get a vision right now of you leaving here healthy. Get a vision of you leaving here operating in the spirit. Get a vision of your church packed with new people in the name of Jesus. Lift those hands up in the name of Jesus. We pray a mass prayer of divine healing against cancer, heart trouble, diabetes. We've come to serve the devil. Notice, Brother Keys, I like what you said a few years ago here. That's not your cancer. That's not your heart trouble. Lava Harianda. My brother, God has given you and your successor a vision of, of your city and you're not landlocked. You're not jammed in ge geographically. You are growing. God is opening up a door. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim that in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive that in the name of Jesus. Your cab runneth over. Your cab runneth over. Now that was healing. Now that was healing. That was physical healing. My daddy is getting ready to transfer a spirit to you. And my, only my heavenly father can do that. But I prayed for my daddy's anointing to fall on us tonight. I prayed for my daddy's purity to fall on us tonight. But for that to happen, you got to love doctrine and you got to love truth. This man prays hours. you got to love the things of God. But God is getting ready to let something fall on you. Now... You hear me, and I'm not being some witchy, spooky, gifty, apostolic. I am hearing from the Lord right now. I told Brother Keys there's something on me, and here's what's on me. As all three of these men have already moved, and our preacher tonight, in the will of God. I am moving in the will of God. All of you would like to see him, Becton or T.F. Tinney or G.A. Mangan or any other elders to lay hands on you. You couldn't get up here with Brother Huntley and his kids tonight. But the Lord wanted me to impress you with one last thing after he just healed your body and gave you the gift of faith and gave you the first message of change cups. My dad is going to pray for you, but what it is is the person beside you is going to lay his hand on you, but I want you to see the hand of G.A. Mangan and his God on you. And I want you to lay your hands on the person's head, not on his back. And that's my dad's hand as far as I'm concerned. And God's going to pray something on you in the name of Jesus. Oh! 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 Let there be a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost upon every one of our ministers and people here tonight. You're walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. You hold the church in your right hand. We have that power, have that authority. Oh! 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 
Listen to me. Listen to me. Woo. Listen to me just a moment. That was an unction of God. And that was part of what God wanted, but that wasn't everything God wanted. We prayed for everybody and we just got things released. Now you got to do for me one more time. I want you to lay your hand back on the person that you had your hand on. And then I want you to stand there and let this man impart something to you. Let there be a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost. Your love and power and your blood upon every person. Let every day there be a sovereign move of miracles of salvation and miracles of divine healing. And miracles that supply the needs of your people, wherever they are. You are walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And you hold the church in your right hand. The right hand of power and authority. Thank God that you honored me. Listen, everybody. With a privilege of living in the latter rain of the Holy Ghost apostolic outpouring. Thank God you gave me the privilege of being in the first generation I saw it in the original. What I feel in the original, what I've lived in the original, I thank you, Lord, you gave to me as a child and brought it on to where it is now. I pray that somehow, some way, that that sovereign move of God will be in every church every day, upon our people every day. If we are in your right hand, we have that power. There's no power greater than what we have. No enemy, no spiritual enemy. No political enemy, no enemy can stand against the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us realize that you're the God of heaven and earth and live by that apostolic of power and authority. Now I ask, you send every one of our people home with apostolic power and authority. I realize since a child, be with them. And let the light of the first chapter of the book of Revelation, let your countenance 
shine above the bright of the sun. Let your fiery eyes. If Christ is in us, we have the Holy Ghost. Why can't his countenance be seen in every one of us? Why can't his countenance be seen in our eyes, the fiery eyes of Almighty God? I pray somehow, some way, that that power and that authority will be invested with them. They'll feel it. They'll keep it. It'll come to them. Send an angel to go with them and keep them. Now let us have the apostolic power and authority. Thank the Lord for that privilege of living in this apostolic atmosphere, apostolic dispensation. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Now that's why, that's why since 19 and 21, I have never moved from this doctrine. This apostolic truth has brought me to where we are right now. And I think I've seen all kinds of doctrines and ideas and fun and, and personal convictions come and go, preachers come and go, but it never has bothered me because I was reared in the first generation of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's safe. I know what it is. You can trust it. You can believe me. I was baptized 80 years ago, July the 4th, in a miracle tent revival. So I bring a lot of experience to the dispensation. Above all, the apostolic truth I have will hold. Stay with it. Don't let everything and anything ever bother you, ever disturb you. They haven't ever disturbed me. I've had to stand up against some powerful people well, because the apostolic truth that I, I that God gave me the privilege. I didn't deserve it, but God gave me the privilege to live in it. That's why we are where we are right now in this church is because the apostolic truth in 19 and 21, my mother and daddy got the Holy Ghost and baptized 80 years ago. Don't let anything bug you. Don't let anything move you off this doctrine. Stay with the truth. I've loved the truth. In Bible school, matter of uh, fact, we, go, we have just a minute. <laughs> when, I, when I first got the Holy Ghost, I, I sat by my daddy's, had a revival. I was traveling in northern Indiana. I sat by my daddy's church, and I witnessed two halfbacks in Indiana University football team that graduated ahead of me. When I got home and I parked on this side by the curb, when I opened the door and stepped out, my foot hit the ground. When it did, an audible voice said, This kind cometh forth not but by fasting and prayer. One week in Apostolic Bible Institute, I wanted a seven day fast. I lacked just a few hours going seven days without eating or drinking anything. If you want to have revival, you go to fasting and praying and pray through the tabernacle plan. I've been praying through the tabernacle plan about 35 or 40 years, but it just dawned on me the last, <laughs> last few months why I prayed through it all those years. But if you do it now, the Bible said, take up your cross and follow me. The Bible said that the foolish will mock the cross. Now, if you don't want to be mocked, you better take up that cross every day. Paul said, I die daily. I'm renewed day by day. I'm crucified with him. He's crucified with me. I'm crucified in the world, and the world crucified to me. You need to set your affections on things above every day. 
Set your affections on things above and not on the things of this earth, for you're dead. If you're dead, you're not alive to all this mess. And if you don't set your affections up there, God's mercy is new every day. He's got something new every day for you. If you don't set your affections up there every day, those affections are going to go out in strange directions. That's why you need to go to the tabernacle plan and hit that altar every day. Don't leave that house till you repent and pray, <laughs> pray and ask God to move. The Bible said the foolish, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that don't. So those that don't pray through the tabernacle plan and take up your cross, uh-oh. It could be foolish. You say it's foolish to pray through the tabernacle plan. That's what the Lord's talking about. Yeah. It's foolish. He says, I'm through. <laughs> well, I gave this tabernacle plan to the church about an hour and a half or so on video. <laughs> he kept interrupting me. <laughs> and I kept having things to say. But you have the privilege of knowing Pentecost in the original outpouring of the lot of rain. Nothing will ever change. You don't have that. I've never worried about nothing. I've never let nothing bug me because I brought up as part of the lot of rain outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I'm not through, but I'll quit. Now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to do one more thing before we leave. We're going to receive what's been spoken by Brother Arnold, what's been spoken by the three men of God, and what's been spoken by my Father and His hands being laid on you tonight. And we're going to leave here with our cup running over. We're going to leave here with fresh faith. We're going to leave here with new desires. We're going to leave here with new consecration. We're going to leave here doctrinally sound. We're going to leave here with our mind made up. Now throw your hands up and shout as loud as you can shout. And let the glory.